Yeah? Go. All right, cool. Uh, I got to go, no? no, up maybe? Yeah, there we go. OK. So I'm doing two projects uh, using Meteor as a user interface for controlling some hardware devices. And uh, hardware is that thing that Amazon doesn't sell. I don't know if a lot of you, yeah. never mind. OK, so two projects. One is 3Scan. Maddie is one of the proprietors of 3Scan. Do you want to we, uh, we, make, we make a special type of microscope that uh, it performs serial sections and moves huge amounts of image data around. And there's a lot of pain and suffering. I'll omit from this talk, hopefully, about that all. But the long and short is we're using Meteor to, uh, to make a really elegant UI. So. And if this works, this will be your sort of moment of zen. Oh, oh yeah, there. that's 3Scan. Blue. So this is some brain vasculature. Um, we'll actually see some data like this in just a second on uh, our microscope interface. But uh, that's a whole mouse brain. That's kind of cool. You can see a lot of little wiggly bits in there. And there's a whole, whole other host of neat science problems you can address as a result of that all. Anyway, uh, let's talk about Meteor. If we can find the. Where to go? Here we go. All right. Yeah. Uh, and the other one is a pick and place robot, which is for uh, if you have a circuit board with surface mount components. This will, uh, you can upload a design file that specifies the schematic for your circuit board, and it will place all of the parts onto the board for you. Um, these are typically designed for like, large scale manufacturing processes, but this is designed for like, short run and prototyping. So here it is uh, at a Facebook hackathon recently, placing a part. It's better with the sound, but you know. <laughs> So there's some feeders over there that have the parts on these tapes. So it's picking one up with a vacuum nozzle and drops it onto the board right there. All right, cool. So um, uh, so these are the projects. So there's a the sort of obvious question is why use Meteor for this? Um, uh, all right. Um, <laughs> it's nice to be able to control your hardware through the web. Uh, you can control it remotely. Uh, it allows you to integrate with other web services. So for the pick and place robot, there's a company called Upverter that's trying to be sort of like GitHub for hardware. And they actually have a button in their user interface so you can export data directly to the pick and place robot, use a upload form and submit data to the pick and place, hit go, and it just makes the part for you immediately. Um, yeah. So we're gonna actually show you the, uh, the interface for our microscope. I think it's still live. I don't know if I turned it off when I left for a reason. <laughs> yeah, so, sign in real quick. Yeah. So we're using the, uh, the standard Google OAuth, as you can see. 30 seconds, great. Um, we're using the standard Google OAuth, as you can see. That's one of the things that comes with Meteor. It's real nice. We didn't have to think about it. Um, but the thing that's really important for us is the ability to like real-time display some information that we've put into a database. There you go. So I'll zoom in on the middle. It's kind of cool. So uh, you'll, you kind of like zoom in on this. You start seeing some of these little neat mouse brainy bits. But the important part is that's a live feed of data from our actual microscope. And these are all tools you can actually use to control it. So that's uh, roughly what we do. All right, and uh, very briefly before we finish, um, uh, trying to compile, trying to get Meteor to run on a BeagleBone Black, which is an ARM V7L, I believe. If anybody knows how to do this, please come contact me. <laughs> <laughs>answers for that. Um, the question was, how are you communicating with the device? Yeah, and uh, the, there are two different answers. So for the, um, for the pick and place robot, it's actually talking to a uh, Arduino over USB over serial. Uh, it's sending G codes down to the device. Uh, and then, Matt, do you want to talk about yeah, the 3Scan? Uh, for our microscope, we actually wrote a uh, Python client, a DDT client, based somewhat on the, uh, the schematics that was in one of the unfinished projects. Um, does some similar stuff, has like a collection. From Meteor to the hardware? What's the conversation going on? Oh, so we use Meteor as kind of a. Page on Meteor to like from here. Ah, okay. So I've got some, uh, some, like, uh, some collection that has these various microscope properties. And as it updates those, those get serialized back to a different DDP client that's actually driven by the hardware. So we wrote our own DDP client. It acts as another client to the Meteor server. A uh, weird fist bump back there. I don't know. <laughs> if you really want to figure out how Meteor works, write a DDP client. It's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll really get it by then. Um, can this talk with LabVIEW? The question was, can this talk with LabVIEW? 
I don't know. I mean, you can probably write some sort of wrapper, but I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you could, if you could write web sockets with LabVIEW, that seems like a bad idea, though. Well, you have a, a DAC that uses LabVIEW, right? Yeah, but that's completely different. It's like a Python wrapper? Yeah. So you could wrap the, you could do the Python wrapper, then DDP client, well, Python. Lab, LabVIEW also really has like its weird kind of functional tree thing going on. I don't know how it would communicate with an asynchronous HTTP. I don't even want to on thoughts about that. Sounds terrible to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I really just like LabVIEW. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ted and Maddie. Sure. Thank you.